Hello everybody, welcome back to Financial Trading Basics Part 25, Tilt. Moved into my new apartment, literally basically the same setup, same like square footage. So the room clearly looks a little different, I don't have any uh, uh, window behind me, and also there's no overhead light, so this is a little darker of a video. Deal with it. <laughs> um, but, moved into my new apartment, uh, we... At last week we did a bunch of math videos, right? Just random aside, and we'll be doing economics today, mainly trading, talk a little bit of COVID, but mainly just trading and economic topics. Um, but first of all, I hope you're enjoying the Olympics. Where are those Olympics at? Tokyo? Tokyo. Two syllables. Tokyo. Kyoto, Tokyo. So, again, from our math, we talk about basis and range. When people don't know what they're talking about, they use more syllables, whether it's pronouncing a city wrong or if you're sitting around with someone who's a chatty Cathy and just can't stop fucking talking. They just use more syllables. So, fun math fact. But, right, what we play, you're play, I play poker, you're playing poker, someone loses 80% of their chip stack and then the next hand they go all in. Tilt. You're playing video games, someone loses a bunch of game or wins a bunch of games and loses. The momentum changes, the emotion changes, tilt. Go watch any sporting game when they're saying momentum's changing, tilt. But that's again just a different word to describe the same thing at different levels of generality, in different function. Um, but all things considered, investor maturity, that is sentiment, is the predominant economic factor to change in the immediate future. S like today for to 10 years. Again, meaning that 15%, I'll even drop that down to like 8 to 10%, meaning understanding how the market mechanics work to be able to put on decent trading per perspectives, but then also to manage the tilt, the emotion, the momentum during, you know, winning or losing trades. Because most people, like I said, regardless of your income level, even if you're a billionaire, you know, the market's just so much bigger. You want to participate if you know a trade's going to happen, which is not possible to do, but you don't want to lose money if it goes down either. So the thing that's going to change is just, again, understanding that and um, the exposure in the market, people won't care about his money as much. And not in like a throwing it away type of way, but again, the protectionist mindset. I have some alc I have some portfolio, I have some amount of wealth, now I don't want to lose it. And then I said, you still have to go invest it or you have stuff to participate with the market. And then, like I said, the, the supply chains won't stop changing. Central banks, you know, local countries, municipalities, that stuff won't change. It's really the, like I said, we've already talked about like the access to the market, cell phones, trading brokerages. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about Robinhood, not much to say, but just saying in, the investor participate participation will increase, but also the, just the maturity of people managing trades altogether will increase. It'll stabilize momentum trades, right? When we see GameStop go from, you know, like I said, the, the $4 to the to three, 300 or whatever, the, the momentum really plays out in the matter, like the, the extreme appreciation plays out in the matter of a couple days, not like weeks or months. And, and that's within a matured, you know, liquid market. Um, but when, when this 8 to 15% maturity goes to 50 to 60 to 70%, like I said, the, the, the environment's not going to stop changing, but the volatility, the swings, the decouplings will, all, will be a lot less strong and the correlations will be stronger because of, again, investor maturity. Um, chart comparison of the 10-year, and for evidence for this, the 10-year, again, a couple weeks ago, you see people talking about the 10-year going from 1% to one. One and a half percent back down, and that type of move will be will be mitigated. Cannabis stocks, Bitcoin, and tech stocks, right? We see the same type of thing where the appreciation you get really steady appreciation for you know for Bitcoin from the January to the March or the April, and then the bigger decrease. Um, but the the momentum, like I said, I don't like comparing big like stabilizing. Uh, the currency market is just tremendously different than a given company or even a given country. So I don't really like including Bitcoin in there. But my point is all of these things will, will stabilize as the tilt or the momentum, emotional investment of the investor, mark, investor group 
increases. Um, and let me make sure I'm still rolling. And now the thing I did want to say about Bitcoin is just the the like the conversations. Like I'll see I'll see a headline. Like I saw a headline the other day. It was like this guy is why. Here's why Bitcoin will be this this dollar figure in three years. And it'll be like two hundred fifty thousand a coin. The only at this level of adoption of cryptocurrencies of the financial markets itself, the only thing that would again mitigate the extreme appreciation of Bitcoin is the adoption against the again the, the cash flows. Not even again, I don't know how much cash is out there. Nobody does. Valuing objects, valuing companies is still very, very again not not consolidated, not structured. Here's the proper, here's a definitive way to do so. And again, I don't think there is a definitive way, but it'll be more consolidated, ten ten percent to sixty seventy percent. Um, but for like the Bitcoin say again, saying the three years, the price appreciation is always going to be paired to the the cycling timing as opposed to, again, this amount of dollar coming into here, or here, or there. Um, so, so, not much to say about Bitcoin either. Like I said, the price, even like I said, the 10,000, the 60,000, the 30,000, to 41-ish thousand today, there's been no momentum in the trade, and, and the end of the year is typically when the, again, the overall this investor maturity this affects every financial market because the investors whether you're buying a chair or a lamp or bitcoin or cannabis stock or a treasury note or a bond you're still the same fucking person so the like said the, the, being redundant but it's the it's the maturity that changes and it's the chart patterns reflect the maturity of, of the investor marketplace um but what, what would what would okay more specifically to Bitcoin what could derail the price action because of the incentive is so low again extreme because I don't think one country like China cracking down on the mining but let's say one big country bans it like the whole sentiment like everyone would have to ban it but then it works better for this country like Singapore or Switzerland or whoever else is doing stuff with that so that's what I'm saying it's like not possible but now forget Bitcoin something that's completely not Bitcoin is still stabilizing financial markets, making the most efficient currency possible. That conversation has nothing to do with Bitcoin. And, and the, the axiomatic factor driving towards efficiency, you would do the same type of tokenization of a physical fiat dollar. Um, so that's really good. Not, not much, too much to say about Bitcoin, but again, just emphasizing that chart patterns reflect momentum trades. Momentum trades will stabilize more as investor maturity increases. Moment, how about the momentum trade for the reopening trade today versus March? In March, like I said, I was I made like 12% on Carnival Cruise Line, almost entered again at that 19 to 20, but I just don't care about really trading anymore. Um, but I, right now, like I said, the momentum trade is just not as convincing to me. Um, Delta variants coming up. We have other other variants. I'll talk about COVID as a, in a biological sense, but just still talking trading here. Um, again, just not as convincing. In March, everything was shut down. Everything was going to come back online. Vaccines just getting rolled out, just getting bam. And now it's like we our vaccination rate is stagnated because people are fucking retarded and. There's already been some stuff reopened, so it's just, it's just not as convincing of a trade. So March, I was very, very for the momentum trade, and I don't, like I, said, I don't, I don't know if it's happened for some of the industries for a lot of different things. Actually, I'm pretty sure it hasn't happened, but the timing of it, we you know when fall hits and we, we get the flu or we get this more COVID or you know whatever. It was just a, just again a note from my other trades. It was a lot more convincing in March than today. Um, let me make sure I'm still rolling. So for the Robinhood IPO, and do I think one, the commission free, free, free trading, is that a big selling point? Absolutely not. I, to me, it's just a brand, like brokerages, that's the, not a new thing at all. Um, I don't, let me know, I won't be taking a position, haven't looked at the company at all. But for our conversation of tilt, of momentum, of emotional changing, the retail investor participation will increase this, right? Every, you have to learn something for the first time, Billy. Everyone's got to struggle for the first time. 
And the first time you really expose money, you're going to be checking the shit all the time. Um, and that's going to increase the, again, the maturity level, the sentiment of the investor base. Um, not much else to say about Robinhood. How about the COVID vaccine thoughts on e efficacy, genetic variation, mandates, and banning mandates? All right, Governor DeSantis and Governor fuck, Abbott, Texas and Florida have banned mask mandates. Our, our, there's our Republicans, our very good, consistent political ideology. We're all for freedom, we're all for national security, right, and we're all for choice. If I have a disease in my nostrils, I'm absolutely scientifically confident, breakthrough infection that certainly can transmit, so how about the baseline of what a vaccine does? Does a, because I just heard on the news the other day, or on Reddit or something, you know, vaccines were touted as miracle cures. Vaccines are 100% effective to, to the level of a genetic, as, as effective as they can be. Is there any, like I said, we've talked about cancer and cannabis and other, other contexts or other videos, but right, the word cure in any sense of biology is just strange to me, right? Can I cure aging? No. Can I have a disease in a state of complete remission or remission to a point where it's not affecting my biology at all? Yes. Is that a cure? No. Is that a state of disease? No. So again, just nuanced on the words. But, but what people should expect from the uh, vaccine, like reinfection, breakthrough cases, um, some protection after antibodies, that's all, again, all of a measure of your underlying cellular health. Um, so nothing, nothing about the vaccine has been surprising to me. Again, the stupidity of the reactions have been. Um, again, resistance, 40% to 50% still have not gotten any vaccine. That's just pure, again, reckless behavior. People think they're invincible. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not convinced yet. They're denying scientific information instinctually. <laughs> Ugh. But again, just want to emphasize on the vaccines, any, any, anything I've seen on the news is underlying genetic variation. I'm very confident on that. You can, all, like I said, you can also transmit without even having a tested, uh, like, if you're, you can just have it in, in your nasal cavity, transmit it, not get an infection. Frankly, like I said, mitigating the, I have the notes here is on CNBC, vaccine getting any infection increases it threefold. That to me, that like only only threefold to me. There again, underlines this is all underlying cellular health symptoms decreases your chances by eightfold. Hospitalization twenty five fold. Death twenty five percent or twenty five fold. And again, this is because of locality and exposure to different symptoms or different molecules. You can have one off or handful off cases of people eating metal, of eating lead. Like literally, people will eat metal. They eat a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time, and their body gets used to it. Right? You go out into the sun. You don't get exposed to the sunlight, you're going to get a sunburn. You go out little by little by little, you build up a tolerance. So the conversation of tolerance and remission and stabilization, it, it makes so much more sense than, again, is, is vaccine a miracle cure or miracle safe? No. Do they absolutely work like exactly as, as they should biologically, socially function? Absolutely. Um, but again, it's just again, and then you see like in nurses being anti-vax. It's like, what the fuck has anyone taught anybody at school? Obviously nothing, because they don't know how to do physics yet, and they denied that. So wow, now we can now we have to make some money and raise our family that we don't even really like anyway, because we're all immature as fuck. And now we can't get where we want in our career, and now we have to have an ideology. You don't have to have opinions if you don't actually study or actually research. Um, but mandates are completely legal. I, I would mandate and encourage them in um, any, any hot spot zone for sure, 100%. You know, I, I wear a mask, okay, like if I'm going to the gym, I'll wear it up and down the stairs, whatever. Bang ma mandates is 100% illegal. It's, a, it's national security and it's not a choice to be infected by somebody who's, again, denying scientific information. Um, and again, just another random thought, like Mike DeWine, I, I emailed this to people, I forget what the, the laws were, but like we have stand your ground, gives freedom and choice, and then he says he doesn't want all, all people, you know, cannabis was like maybe being introduced into the legislature in the state of Ohio, 
and he's like, I don't think everyone should be able to smoke weed. Or so again, you can just, you just, he didn't say that, but he said, I don't think everyone should, or like, we have our own plan to roll it out or something. If I have one more fucking politician who, again, demonstrably denied scientific information to genuine, genuine genocide, make a policy without fucking consulting me or just doing what the fuck I say to do, it's just, I mean, it's illegal. It's fucking illegal. Mike DeWine, right, right, right to our life, except in terms of biological health and everyone's so stupid. Um, but that's what I want to talk about for today, Financial Trading Basics Part 25, Tilt. Um, just another word for momentum and how emotions will stabilize as people stabilize. Um, speaking of which, I've been eating fine. Holy fuck. <laughs> for real, like the past month or two has been an absolute carnival show at my old apartment. How people can come up and tell me what the fuck is going on without paying me is just barnacles. Um, but removed myself from the stress, and the stress was really just the apartment building. Holy fuck. I get intimidated, harassed at my house, while people are literally watching me, literally telling me that, and they can't give me like 10k to like, go move. <laughs> but, moved in, 95% moved in, eating fine, that's about it for today. Um, might do some more math, or might do um, another just like language or uh, uh, casual conversation soon as well. Thank you for watching part 25, Tilt.